the best seven HF antennas for ham radio on Amazon. My top picks for getting on the HF bands. Stuff you can pick up on Amazon very easily. Check the links in the description below. Let's get started. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in ham radio. So I was told recently that I should do more Amazon videos. I have an Amazon affiliate account and I can make commission from several things if you use my store or click on the links in the description below. Not everything is available on Amazon affiliates, but many things are, and a lot of YouTubers make uh, commissions on Amazon that way. So just FYI. But these are my top seven picks for antenna, antennas, HF antennas, several RQRP, but one or two of them are actually full legal limit. Top seven picks for HF antennas you can get on Amazon right now. These are easily deployable antennas. These are not permanent home, put it up and leave it antennas. These are deployable antennas, great for POTA, parks on the air, field day, Summits on the air, some of them will do great. Uh, portable radio of some kind. So let's get started and, and I'll show you what I've picked and why. As I typically do, we're going to go in order of price. And now you can find this antenna from uh, under two or three different name brands. This is kind of a no, it's called a no tune in fed half wave. The one we're looking at today is by Tilatin, Tilatin, however you say that, Tilatin Robot. Whatever, whatever that is. And again, you can find this under uh, different names. Kyle had one of these on our Grand Canyon trip, something that looked very similar to this. This is kind of cool because it tells you right there on the actual PCB board where the toroid is, is mounted, the approximate wire length for all of these bands that you might want to cover. Now, the way an in-fed half wave works basically is you have your feed point for your coax at one end, and then you have wire going off of that for a certain length. That length of wire can be pretty much anything you want to. If you have a 40 meter length of wire, it should typically tune 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and maybe 10 meters might be a little bit high, but would certainly be doable with a, with an external tuner. Or you might actually be able to get 10 meters down into the tuned capacity, basically beneath 1.5 or 1.6 to 1 SWR ratio. So in-fed half wave, 40 meters are great for a portable and a parks on the air contacts. This one is sells for 17 88 prime one day available shipping it handles about up to 10 watts if you scroll down here it'll say what is the maximum wattage it can handle somebody asked right here no more than 10 watts why they don't put that information in the front up here is beyond me i don't i don't really know but this is a kit that you buy you buy this kit the way it looks right here it comes pre-assembled like this and then you add your own wire to it so you can make it a 20 meter 40 meter 80 meter 80 meter is going to be more wire of course that kind of thing. But for 18 bucks, you just add your own wire. This is a good, small, lightweight, portable kit to put in a go pack to take up on a mountain or take out to portable radio somewhere. The next two are both from Adam, K6ARK. Now, I've had Adam on this show several times. He's come on. He's talked about his antenna kits. He does sell these at his, his website, K6ARK.com. But if you go to his website and read around his stuff, which I, I highly suggest that you do, if you click on Buy Now, it takes you to the Amazon site. So, so I'm just showing the Amazon site today. This is his QRP antenna matching kit for a male BNC. So you've got this BNC connector in there. He does make one for a female BNC. So depending on which way you want to make it, uh, which radio you're using, what type of coax you're using, you might want to get a female or a male BNC connector that actually goes on the, the antenna matching unit, what he calls an unun kit here. So build as a 49 to 1 unun, -un, a 9 to 1 unun, -un, or a 1 to 1 balance. Just add wire to complete your antenna. So again, this does not come with wire. You have to add your own wire. It is maxed rating for uh, for 5 watts at high duty cycle and 10 watts at single sideband. So high duty cycle is going to be something like FT8 or CW. It's, this is going to be more of a duty cycle than uh, single sideband. These are very small, lightweight kits that are great uh, for if you're backpacking and you're concerned about uh, weight and how heavy all your equipment is. This one actually, this one fits that bill very well. His next version is a 20 watt. Now you can see right here, last purchased in July. I actually have this one right here. I'm going to build this. I'm working on a video right now to build it actually. So he's got a 100 watt kit that he's been kind of dangling in front of me for a little bit, but he hadn't released it yet. I think he's trying to tease me with that because you know how I am about QRP. But this one will handle 20 watts power uh, power max. The biggest difference is the toroid. That's this big silver disc over on the far right hand, hand side right here. So the toroid size and how many wraps determines your power and duty cycle that the antenna will handle. This is very similar to the 5 watt kit. It's just got a bigger 
bigger tool run on it, so it does weigh just a little bit more, but it'll handle 20 watts of power uh, up to up to max power of 20. Probably that single sideband, maybe 10 watts on CW and FT8. He doesn't really specify here, but that's his a little bit bigger kit that's not quite 100 watts yet. Next one is Radio Waves. Now, Radio Waves has been well known in the amateur radio world for a while. They make a lot. They make a hex beam. They make two or three different sizes of hex beams. They make a lot of portable antennas. They make a lot of uh, put it up at home and leave it type antennas. And they make some uh, some mobile stuff as well. This is an NFED half wave kit. Now, again, everything we talked about up to this point has been NFED half wave. NFED half wave is good for portable operations because they don't take up much room. Their fr footprint is small. They're typically pretty lightweight. And they're just great to pack with where you don't have to carry a bunch of stuff around. So this is their uh, radio waves and fed half wave with 40 meters of wire. It actually does come with wire. So this is a complete kit right here. A little bit more expensive, uh, $94 at the time of this recording. And it will handle up to a 200 watt capacity. So that's, pro again, that's probably sideband. It doesn't really say in here. You might be able to drill down on the uh, radio waves website, get a little bit more details on that this does have an so239 connector instead of a bnc connector like the previous three we mentioned so you can hook a reg what i'd call a regular piece of coax to it that goes from say a 100 watt radio like an ic7300 or ftdx10 with pl259s on each end of the coax and it go right into this antenna so this is a little bit this is more antenna because it comes with wire higher power handling capacity and radio waves is a very good brand that if you've been into amateur radio for any amount of time you should recognize that <laughs> the next one's a radio waves dx40 off center fed dipole for 40 20 10 and 6 meters now an off center fed dipole is going to put the feed point ha uh, somewhere between the two ends of wire an in fed half wave puts your feed point where you connect your coax at the end of the wire so if you have 40 meters worth of wire say 66 feet is, is this long right here, your feed point or where you connect your antenna is going to be at the end of an in-fed half wave, and then all the wire is going to be on the other side of your coax. With a center fed or an off-center fed dipole, your feed point is somewhere in the middle, either directly in the middle for a center fed or somewhere in off-center for an off-center fed, and you're, you're going to have wire that goes out on either side of the feed point of the coax. The great thing about off-center fed and center fed dipoles is they're not as noisy as an in-fed half-wave antenna can be. So they don't pick up as much interference. They're going to be a little bit quieter, but they take up more room. They're typically more, uh, they're typically a little bit heavier with a, with a different type of, of either ballon or unun or connecting matching device in the middle. So you're talking about a little bit more weight, maybe a little bit bulky, but this is about the same price as $4 more at the time of this recording for an off-center fed dipole that will do up to six meters. That in-fed Half waves typically won't do six meters, depending on how what kind of wire you cut for it. So this one will do up to six meters. It is a rated for up to 1,500 watts. So it will handle legal limits. So if you're crazy like I am, and you want to take your 500 or 1,000 watt amplifier out to parks on the air, you can use this antenna to do that. It's really fun to do that. I don't care what anybody tells you. The QRP guys get jealous, and that's okay. I, I'm okay with that. I sleep just fine at night. This next one is a wind camp antenna. Now, wind camp, Now, I haven't used this antenna, and I'm a little bit suspect on, on how it's built and how it's made, so I might just pick this up myself and, and use it. But I'm including it today because I have used other wind camp devices. I've got a couple of wind camp devices for my IC705, an antenna mounting bracket, a couple of other things for various antenna accessories and whatnot. And I've been happy with the quality that WinCamp has built into other items that I've used. So this one shows that it is a full-size halfway dipole antenna for 5 to 50 megahertz, which includes 6 meters. I don't know why they rate the antenna at 5 megahertz, which is 60 meters. So I wonder if it will actually work at 60 meters with no tuner. Or maybe you need a tuner for it to work at 60 meters. I don't know. I find that an odd measurement of frequency, 5 to 50 megahertz. So I, it's got me curious more than anything else. But I know the name WinCamp. I trust the name WinCamp uh, based on other things I've used in the past. Uh, you can read down here. This is 85 feet when fully deployed. Most of the time, your 40 meter in fed half wave is 60 to 65 feet. I think the off center fed dipole we just looked at was about that, is what 65 ish feet. So this one's a little bit longer, more wire, more bulky, more weight. Now, it doesn't really say what the max power is. So, you know, you might want to ask that question. I'm not real sure. It's not giving you much here, but it does give this really cool diagram that says what you do is you unwind 
the wire from the end wire winder devices and you can change the resonance of the antenna so if you want to make it for 20 meters you can unwind it a little bit want to make it for 30 meters or 40 meters you unwind it a little bit more 60 meters you unwind it all the way so it's tunable tunable by just making the wire longer and shorter on the winders so again this is not something i've tried again i like the name wind camp so i'd be curious to see what this works like but i wanted to add it to the list today because it is available for 119 dollars on amazon and assuming that it does what it says it does it does come with a waterproof ballon so you can hang it up in the rain you know you're out operating parks on the air spending the night or something and it starts to rain on you you don't have to worry about taking the antenna down really quick that's cool the last one i'm going to talk about today these are actually ham sticks now, ham sticks are typically made for mobile applications. You can mount them on a vehicle. They are monoband antennas. This is a five-pack of ham sticks. You get five antennas, one for 10, 15, 20 meters, 40 meters, and 75 meters. They're monoband vertical antennas. I did a video a while back activating some parks on the air with my Shark Antennas ham sticks, which is what these are. This is a five-pack for $120. So you get five bands, five individual antennas for $120. You can actually get different mounts that will mount ham sticks to a tripod, to some sort of temporary setup. So you don't have to be in the car to use a ham stick. There's even a, a, a small device that typically a ham stick is vertical. There's a small device that, that sticks a ham stick in a horizontal configuration and puts two of them going out horizontally instead of one of them vertically. So you can use them in different configurations. They're very versatile. They're lightweight. They're somewhat narrow banded, but they work very well for a with a with a rate because you can tune them. You can move the the stainless steel piece up and down to tune the antenna. And if you have an internal tuner on your radio, you can use that as well. But I've had very good luck with these shark antenna ham sticks. They are made in the USA. So I wanted to add them to the list today as something a little bit different than everything we've talked about. So what do you think, guys? What other antennas have you purchased on Amazon? Now, remember, Amazon's kind of fluid. If you say, oh, well, you didn't include this antenna, go look and make sure it's still there because they might be sold out of it at the time of this recording. There are several antennas I've bought on Amazon and radio accessories and batteries I bought on Amazon that I go back and I'm like, where did this go? Well, they're out of stock right now, so they don't have them. These are the ones I was able to find today. Maybe I'll do a new, another video later on and pick something else because Amazon's got a really good return policy. So if you get something, you don't like it or it's damaged or whatever, return it, get something else. Check the links in the description below for my affiliate link, which does help support this channel, 73.